Blood Wind. International Ghost Zones Part 2. Okay. Right. Now, Bloodwind was in uh, Manhattan Park, Central Park in New York City, and uh, assessing the King Richard fella and the things which had been going on. And King Richard, he summoned him to his presence and walked throughout Manhattan one afternoon and started gathering some of the ghosts which had been emerging. And the, the plan was to traverse with them across the ocean from Ellis Island, where they were outward bound, processed, on the QE2 to the Orkney Islands in a... Uh, north of Scotland in the United Kingdom. That was a general plan, and so because that was a plan, that's generally what they did. They crossed the Atlantic Ocean, the ghosts who had been found in physical form after a bit, and travelled to a town in Scotland in the Orkney Islands, which had been ready for them and which knew about these sorts of ideas. There had been issues recently, in recent times, with, with Bloodwind on this particular island, on other concerns. But uh, this particular happenstance was the, uh, the ghost zones. The realities, though, of Cairo from news reports and Rome, Darwin in Australia... Honolulu in Hawaii and Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia, emitting a new network of ghosts on a common agenda to life in the upper world, was illuminating to Bert Ludwind. It was an international reality which was occurring. Assessing the reality of it, he consulted the Book of Revelation of all things in his somewhat Christian faith and this did not seem to be the agenda of Revelation that much. Reading the book, he puzzled on metahumans. The good Lord didn't seem to have metahumans in mind in the original framing of scriptural days. The Rainbow Covenant as well, the mainstream faith in some ways, did not seem to speak of these extraordinary human beings which had been around in historical times, but... The 20th century seemed the main emergence of the metahuman realities. He expressed to the air in front of him in his hotel room in, in Orkney Island and the town which he'd gotten to, the cataclysmic events of recent decades in the universe was part of, expressed many of the dramatics of the Book of Revelation, but he, uh, he felt that the Christian apocalypse appeared but one component in modern times of a bigger picture where there were many more plays in the game than simply the Revelation prophecy. Too many other plays in this huge game of this universe was part of, for that to be the only thing of consideration. Too much else going on. And potentially these ghost zones were part of the reality of how it all fitted together. One afternoon, Blood and Loom was in the Orkney Islands town and, uh, had travelled to a public school there and was talking with the children about the new town plan. This town was involved with magical affairs. There were all sorts of magical people living in this particular aspect of, aspect of Orkney, uh, a magical region where ley lines did it actually show up quite a bit as well. The teacher had been asking questions and... They did a class project that afternoon, putting the names of the new cities around the globe where the ghost zones were realities and were happening. The news reports had arranged, had, 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 uh, had announced a number of former souls which had risen from Hades by the looks of it, and they put a number of the names, of the famous names, next to the towns and cities they'd travelled and gone to. 
Not everyone appears to be rising, said Bloodwind. The souls seemingly still intact in this afterworld of Hades' experience, as if they had been at rest from our conversations with King Richard. But what regular, wanted regular life again, the king stated to me then that he has things to do again for a good long while. And apparently this fleshy substance, so he was informed and those responsible for what was going on, was grafted into them again in their restoration, largely though for a regular enough lifetime again, and that that it would uh, it would have its time again and again to a rest apparently, and apparently it's it's something which is earned. The time was right, and many emerged to take their reward. So that's how it works, children, said the teacher. Young Jack Kilburn put his hand up, a young student in the class. Yes, Jack, said the teacher, except, of course, for Jack uh, Vandal Savage. Gladwin gave him a look, of course, except for Vandal Savage. Stella Kirby put her hand up, and Wonder Woman... Yes, of course, said Bloodwin. Indeed, yes. And the children nattered about many of the Eternals who apparently wouldn't even taste Hades of the world experience. Anyway.